I'm sure you'll have noticed there's been a lot of excitement recently about the discovery of what are believed to be the remains of King Richard III. And when I say discovery, I don't mean someone tripped over a skeleton in a field, did a double take, said to themselves, hang on, that femur looks familiar, and would you believe it, it turned out it was Dicky III. No, I mean they worked out where he might have been buried, dug him up, and now they reckon it's him. Part of this excitement, the chief digger-upper explained, was because in archaeology one rarely finds named individuals. Really? Doesn't one? Well, I can show you a better place to dig. If your aim is to unearth as many named individuals as possible, you're looking in the wrong places. There's this patch of, I don't know, I suppose it must be waste ground behind a church near me, where individuals are buried all the time, and here's the best part, they all have a lump of rock over where they are with their names actually written on. Start off with Albert George Pennyshaw, 1922 to 2012. They only put him in last week, you might even get a free suit into the bargain. No, they mean named individuals they didn't already know were there. Only, even if they didn't know exactly where Richard III was, presumably they knew he was somewhere. I mean, this wasn't just a check to make sure generally that Richard III was buried. Like when you check whether or not the door's locked by unlocking it. We wanted to make sure Richard III was buried, so we looked everywhere till we found him and dug him up, and he was buried, so that's all right. It does seem a bit like that might be it. Especially given that the question now vexing many of those concerned is where, now they've dug him up, he should be buried. Well, surely in the... I mean, you just... After all, it's not as if he was slung behind a bush at the Battle of Bosworth. The reason they knew where to look is that he was given a Christian burial in Greyfriars Churchyard. Indeed, this fuels one local bishop's desire for the remains to be buried in his cathedral. As he said... If human remains are found in the location of consecrated ground, there is an obvious case for interring them in consecrated ground. Absolutely, yes. Unless there was some way of, I don't know, somehow cutting out the middleman and... No, it's gone. But actually, I disagree with the bishop. I think, now we've gone to all the trouble of finding him and digging him up, we should make a feature out of him. I mean, I'm not suggesting we make him king again. I'm the first to acknowledge that's untenable. In the 500 years it's taken to find him, he's not weathered well. Even Richard III's greatest advocates, those who strongly believe he was a good man, wrongly maligned by the subsequent Tudor regime, would surely concede he's no longer fit for government. It's not like when Mandela came out and was still in good enough nick to be president. All I'm suggesting is we polish up the bones, pop a crown on him and a big red coat, and give the tourists something to have their photographs taken with. You know, the full Mary Rose treatment. The king is dead. Long live the king. Oh.